Hi and welcome to April 2022 Patreon Rewards video. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Um, so I'll, I'll start with uh, the this month's postcard, which is here. And um, I'll just straight up uh, tell you who the winner is before I even, even start talking about it. Uh, the winner of this postcard is George. George, you won uh, this month's postcard. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I think I think this is uh, maybe the third time you've won something. That's great. Okay, so um, this postcard. Uh, this time around, um, the process. If you if you saw the video, uh, which you may or may not have, depending on the order I published these videos, uh, this 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 postcard came uh, was done. Uh, fairly quickly it, it felt it felt m uh, much more controlled um, and again the, the my, my whole uh, the, the whole idea of this postcard and the ones that I have been doing is to try to get a luminous quality uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the video uh, that that's important that is it, it's a good takeaway is that uh, colors at their most saturated, have a specific value associated to them. By value, I mean uh, 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 a comparison in the grayscale. Uh, the the grayscale value. See, so like uh, this this uh, value scale of gray to black. Um, each color, at its at its most saturated, at its at its most um, pure. Uh, has a, a, a relation to one of these values. Uh, so no matter how saturated, how thick you're putting down the paint, um, it's not going to get any darker or lighter than its highest value point, unless you mix it with a, val uh, with a color that has a higher value point. Uh, the reason I say that is because um, the yellow in this in this uh, in this postcard, I was laying it on thick, knowing that it, it no matter how thick I laid in or how saturated I laid in the uh, the um, the yellow, it wasn't going to get any darker than its value could convey. So um, it was one of those things that I w that's very helpful that I was kind of using the color as if it was a gray of a specific value. Um, so that, that was one of the takeaways that I, that I took, uh, when, when I did this. Um, but I, I'm, 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 gl I'm happy with the way it's turning out and, and, and I'm going to keep trying to go in this direction. If anything, um, what it's lacking is, is, um, is an extreme dark and not on the figure, but maybe the surrounding area. So I'm going to be playing a little bit more with, with, um, pushing, the darkness so that um, the the figure in in luminosity can can even can can explode can can be even more bright all right um, I've been working on trying to get my values my value controls right in in pencil form um, usually, so, so one of the things that I've always disliked has been rendering in pencil or pen. Uh, one of the reasons why I've, I've disliked it, well, it's twofold. One of my friends, I was talking to one of my friends about it. And one of the things he said is you probably don't like it cause you're not good at it. <laughs> and he's, and he's right. Like, like I'm just, I, 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 I uh, uh, that, that's that's one of the reasons why uh, I, I've uh, I've avoided it because I've never been really good at it. However, <clears throat> I've also <clears throat> didn't like the tedium. Like when 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 you when you uh, I didn't like the process of doing it. I I I, I uh, there was nothing uh, that 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 was challenging my mind or my brain when I was doing this. Right, like, what's so what's so challenging? I, I just didn't, I didn't understand. Like, like it, it was it was 
it, it's one of those things where it was just not not a thing I enjoyed, uh, which is why I, I don't mind doing it when I'm painting digitally or when I'm painting in watercolor or when I'm painting in general. There's something about the feel of the brush or the, the, the pushing of the paint, even when it's digital, um, there's, there's, a, there's a challenge there that I enjoy, that, that, that there's a tactility about it that I enjoy. But I've never had that same uh, enjoyment when it came to using line work type rendering. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm challenging myself to find that joy, finding that 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 feel that that may that there there might be something in here. So one of the things that I'm trying is this kind of line work feel like 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 not not doing it careful because I found that that I, is something I don't enjoy either. Uh, but when I do it a little bit faster, when I'm just like it, when it's when it's a little bit more like quick um there's there's something about that that i actually do enjoy and then and then there's a, there's that element of of a finesse and control there that i actually do like that i can build here like if i do this i can build it and it, and it feels and it feels good so um uh, i did uh, this was an experiment that i did uh trying to uh, trying to um to do that so um that this the and 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 one of the things that I'm I'm also challenging myself in, uh, is is getting, um, uh, drawing. Uh, badly lit. Poorly lit ambient light. Art like like from reference like usually when you see something in real life or or you get a bad photo or, or whatever it is, um. It's usually not dramatic. There's no drama, and and one of the things that I've always had trouble with is is that it's more fun and more interesting and more dramatic and more beautiful at the end if if there's a clear light and dark masses of shape like like uh, uh, and I think I talked about it in the last video. Um, so I'm challenging myself to 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 draw or, or render within a, a, a pictures that are really poorly lit and kind of crap um, because what that does is it um, is it helps it, it, um, it helps me uh, learn to control the values so I could still get something that looks right without the drama um, and that's really challenging for me so I'm going to try to be doing that a little bit more and here I did th this is out of my head just trying to trying to control line my line work and the values at the same time that, that was the the the, um, the exercise that I was trying to do here um, control of value and control of line work and to try to get the finesse of, of, of the uh, of this area which is the areas that I always have trouble with is, is this uh, the the how uh, what to do in the areas that are um, much more subtle and this was me experimenting with my with my nib pens like this one whoops this one this is the one um uh, let's see if i could you could see it so this 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 one was this here and then this and then this area here was done with the the crow quill that I tend to use when I'm doing my, I, I, li I actually like the, the control with this because it makes such a thin line that this, this is actually very good for like those mid tones, like areas like right here. Um, I think I'm going to try to experiment with this really fine line to try to do those mid tones. But again, this, it's all an experiment. Uh, this is just me, uh, little notes that I gave myself. Uh, for for trying to w when I would do something like this, uh, uh, I I, I kind of the glow um, is, is all about putting the values on the outside and leaving the inside white so that you can kind of get this kind of a glow effect. 
Um, here's a little note about uh, how to how, how to make acrylics last a little longer and not dry up so fast if you use this kind of additive. Um, you want to convey on a post-it. Okay, so this is this is a little note that I wrote down about um, about uh, if you when you want to do a picture and um, you 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 should. I think uh, Michelle uh, Vignali was was saying something about um, writing the the emotion or the idea you want to write you want to you want to convey put it on a post it and then see if you you can match this abstract notion and 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 if and if that abstract notion can can be communicated in the drawing you make um and then this is this one says use the language of dreams use the language of dreams is just a fancy way of saying uh use symbolic language psychological language when you are doing a a um any kind of illustration or picture, and this is something that I'm that 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 I'm kind of obsessing about uh, recently. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in a little, in a little while. Um, again, this is an unfinished piece. I started I started it. Uh, it was meant to be a study, uh, and again, it's one of these pencil drawings. I didn't even finish it. I, I started it, and then I just for two weeks I just didn't work on it, or, or like an, uh, about a week I didn't work on it, and then I was wondering why I didn't want to come back to it. And the reason I didn't want to come back to it was because I didn't like the way I drew the face. Um, uh, I realized that uh, the face, though it matched the reference, um, it matched it too well. Uh, I, I think I didn't want the my version to look like the lady that I was... Uh, drawing from not because she wasn't pretty but because i wanted to make her even more style i wanted to to i wanted to idealize her more her face more um and there was something about that that wasn't pushing me to to move forward um so uh i started so i erased her face except for the mouth, and I'm struggling to uh, draw that face the way I want it. Uh, this is as far, I, I, this is like the fifth or sixth time that of area of shape that I drew, um, and it's still not quite what I want, so uh, I'm still working on it. Um, this is also uh, part of the process. Uh, here's my notes on stuff like right here I have this is an HB I mean no this is an HB pencil and this is an H and what I did was I took the H and I and I checked to see how light I could draw uh, how light the marks were the, 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 the scan it's so light that the scanner couldn't couldn't pick up the, the line and then here I have the the darkest that an HB, uh, the value of an HB can give me. And this is my little note as to what it is. Depending on the scale, it could be six or five. Um, but this is as dark as it gets. That means that um, I don't get any darker than that. The, as hard as I can press on the pencil, it won't get harder than uh, a six, five, right? Uh, like I said, like it depends on, 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 um, on the scale. When I say six, five, it means that um, Black could be either 10 or it could be 1. And white can be either 1 or it could be 10. So depending on which which value scale you're using, this is it. So like for example, if, 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 if uh, 10 is white, then this is a 9. If 10 is 1, I mean if, if, if white is 1, then it's 2, right? That's what I mean. And then here's an H pencil. And the H pencil, as, as dark, it doesn't get any darker than a five six, right? Like that, it's 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 around there. Um, which is different than this. This is it's an H pencil gets one value below or lower than an H B. So those were my notes uh, for that. So and 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 the reason why the H uh, I'm I'm dealing with H's. Is again, it's it's all about uh, being able to do what's in the light, like how to control the values in the light. 
Um, Because that's usually the values that you see when everything is just ambient light, right? The ambient light, um, it's all really light, very, very fine values, uh, mostly in the light, mostly in the in the value range of 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 um, mostly in this this light gray scale, right? Like usually, like anything in the light is about these two scale in value, right? Like about about here in the in the value scale. So you're dealing with that, which means that you need to be able to make the softest mark possible so that you can um, best convey what's going on here. I'm extremely bad at dealing with uh, value scales this light uh, so and controlling that. I, I'm much more comfortable dealing with higher, darker values. So for me, the challenge is working in the light area. Uh, I need to work on that a lot. So that was the that's the exercise that I'm doing. This is going to be obviously there is there is a, a dark valley here, but most of the uh, of the work is going to take place in this area here in the white area, and um, which is why I need to be able to control it better. Uh, right now I'm only using H and HB pencils, so it's it's very light marks. Eventually, it's gonna I'm gonna have to start getting darker pencils so I could get a little bit darker, um, so that this area can pop more. But um, for now, uh, I, I'm I'm still just working on the values. And again, that face. As soon as I get that face down, I think I'll I'll, I'll finally get uh, into it more. But I'm trying to get this face right now. I'm super super frustrated because it's just not happening. So I'm going to have to do something to try to figure out how to make this face work because I'm not happy with it right now. Uh, I may need to get like a, some some um, tracing paper and just just scribble until I get what I want because it's not working and, I, and I'm really frustrated. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, there is a lot. Uh, let me let me go over here. So there there's a there's um. Uh, so what happens to me a lot of the time is that I'm chasing squirrels all the time. Like I, I get very excited about an idea and then another idea grabs my attention. I'd rather follow that idea than, than stick to the one that I've been doing. Uh, no matter how, um, how well I've been uh, pursuing the other one, I just kind of abandon it. So like uh, if you noticed uh, that video game thing that I was trying to do hasn't, gotten anywhere uh, because I've been chasing squirrels and um, and I've had a conversation uh, on, on, on uh, with some people um, and and part of it was th that conversation that I had uh, with Steve over on patreon when uh, on, on patreon discord when when he suggested doing a black terror kid video game um, that, that kind of stuck that black terror kid thing in my head. And then I actually had a conversation on, on Instagram with um, a very, very uh, nice, super sweet guy, um, uh, Omar. And, um, and then we, we had a big conversation. And he, he actually straight up asked me what I'm doing with Black Terror. And um, I told him I haven't been doing it. I mean, I, I thought he, he served his purpose, um, which was to get this kind of thing out of my system that I really wanted to have happen but um, that just got me thinking and and um, and then I thought that maybe I can I can do it just made me want to draw a black terror kid because both the combination of, of, of the conversation with Steve and and, and and then Omar made me want to just do these again and I have a colleague, her name is uh, Liz uh, Climo, and she um, made a, uh, she, she, she has a, um, a comic strip that, that kind of uh, took off for her uh, while she was on The Simpsons. And, um, and now it's like, very, like, like, just look her up, like, like you'll see, they're, they're beautiful. They're so cute, so innocent. And very, very funny little animal strips, but the 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 way that she does them um, are, are very very simple. It's just two panels, uh, 
set up and payoff, and they work so well. And then I'm like, well, I want to take a page off of her um, her book of, of gags, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to challenge myself to do um, two panel uh, strips uh, with uh, just like that set up and pay off the end um, and uh, with Black Terror and it would be really quick like and it would be fun and um, and and maybe that'll get it out of my system so I can move on and do something else maybe um, so I decided that that's what I would do and I came up with uh, five gags and uh and then uh just recently i came up with a sixth and uh that's what i'm doing i'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna do these six gags and if if i have another idea i will do another one but um but that's this is these are the black terror kids uh strips that i'm doing um so uh just i'll read them to you in case you're don't want to read them um it says so uh, black terror he says my pet turtle is uh Superhero with superpowers. Uh, he just pooped on the claw's brand new rug. <laughs> That's his superpower. So, um, this is a poop poop joke, obviously. Um, this is, you know, it makes my little boys laugh. Anything with poop, farting, makes my boys laugh. So, um, low hanging fruit. So, that, this was the first one that I did. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, the next one, this is, uh, for the last time, the claws eating pork rinds. Pork rinds, not porcupines. So um, this is inspired by the fact that my kids always, they, they don't quite hear what you're saying. <laughs> when they're little, they, they mistake what you, what you, what they hear a lot of the time. And, and it's, and it's kind of funny. So again, this was that, and then the the last one here. God, the clothes, the claws clothes are so itchy today. To the rescue! And then, he, why do you, why'd you do that? A claws is all wet now. Yeah, but you're no longer itchy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, solving a problem with a sol with a problem uh, is a is is problematic. So uh, yeah, so those were the, that's uh, those were the, the strips. Um, no background kind of thing, you know. Like like I said, uh, Liz Liz doesn't really draw backgrounds on her thing. I was like, well, that's simple. It makes sense. And and, and there's only props and backgrounds whenever props and gra backgrounds are needed, right? Like this one didn't need any background at all. This one I I wanted him to be sitting, and, and this one I. Well, it obviously needed a rug for the turtle to poop on. So I drew the rug um, and then left everything else, else uh, very simple. So the idea is to try to make it as simple as possible. This one's only a one panel gag because it's just a word play. And then this one, um, two panels. And I, like I said, I, I've got two more. And so that's what these are. These are just very, very straightforward, very simple. Uh, there's nothing fancy about them. The the colors are it's it's very cell shaded. Uh, I'm keeping that look. And this was one of the thing other things that I that that, that I kind of wanted to do with uh, Black Terror is that I I did redesign Black Terror from the last time that I did a uh, a comic of with him. He he looked very different. There were, like you can see all the detail in his in his in his uh, costume. You no longer see any of the detail in this costume. He's all black. He's just one giant silhouette. Um, and that simplifies the drawing of Black Terror. But it also, uh, his face, I changed the way that his face looks a little bit. So he, he's much cuter now. His eyes are even bigger. Um, uh, his face is much, much straighter, more, much smoother. Uh, I didn't change the claw. But but definitely Black Terror has, has he's had a, a little bit of a slight design change, and and uh, this is this is uh, the first time that I'm really uh, I, I have done a comic strip with his with his newest design, but this is the first time that I'm really using it more. So um, yeah, so that's that's the story behind the Black Terror stuff. I'm gonna be just doing that 
a little bit more from now on uh, until I finish the sixth. And if there's any more, I will draw that because they're really fast um, to do. Uh, they usually take me about um, about two, three hours, something like that, uh, to do them. And, um, and that's pretty quick for me. So this is a uh, just the notes from from one of the videos that I did about the Houston uh, the Houston pencil test I'm drawing uh, uh, straight uh, uh, get, get uh, how to use a pencil to to draw in three dimensional uh, to see uh, dimension in, in, in the figure that you're that you're absorbing from so that was from that and then I have this drawing that I did an example of um, what was it? Oh, a straight line exercise that you can do. So I drew all this entire uh, figure just using straight lines. That, that, was the, that was the challenge. Can you draw a figure just using straight lines? And that includes values, right? Um, so the rule is no curves, just straight lines. And, um, and, and, uh, and this is what it looks like. And, and I highly recommend doing this exercise because um, uh, sometimes we get too caught up trying to draw everything so organic and 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 and, um, and and using a lot of curves, um, when in fact, um, uh, and and then and then you you end up with a very wishy washy, uncontrolled, nebulous looking figure. Uh, but if but for some reason, uh, this was an exercise that I was told to do in a lot of figure drawing classes. And, 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 and it was an eye-opening moment when, when you realize that, that the versatility of a single straight line um, can give you really good results. And, um, and when you do that and then you combine it with the occasional soft or curve, um, your, your stuff really, really starts to pop. But uh, so, yeah, like, so uh, this is a, this, that was the point of the exercise is just to do a whole figure with only straights. And that's it for me uh, this month. Um, there's a lot of thing, weird things going on in my head. Um, like I said, I'm chasing a lot of squirrels. Um, and, and one of the things that, um, that I'm really, really thinking about is symbolism. Um, so stay tuned maybe i will go deeper into that sort of thing but um but it's something that's universal in all the best artists in the world that they're able to kind of the ones that can communicate really well um they have a a vocabulary of symbolism that um that transcends just the draftsmanship craftsmanship part of drawing and um, and uh, and it gives drawing more of a purpose than simply um, what is traditionally understood to just be drawing. Uh, it's 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 difficult to explain, but um, but maybe I'll go into it once I I'm able to articulate it better for myself, and um, and I'm able to 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 produce the type of work that I'm thinking of doing. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, okay, well, that, that's it. Thank you for, for watching. Um, thank you for your support on Patreon. I mean, it really, 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 really helps. Um, beginning next week, I am going on hiatus from my job for a full month. So I'm actually not going to be getting any pay at all for for a month um, so that's not I, I'm not looking forward to that it's gonna be kind of harrowing uh, especially because um, just crazy weird stuff um, we did our taxes we got our we got our, our tax return which was 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 good and we were like, yay, okay, we could probably survive the hiatus, except that the IRS must be doing something. Uh, they must be nickel and diming as many people as they possibly could to try to, like, squeeze as much money out of everybody as possible because of the 
financial situation that the government put itself in. So um, the IRS sent us a letter saying that there was a discrepancy of a thousand dollars in a uh, in an IR in a in a in a tax uh, uh, thing that we did uh, in 2020. 2020. That's how they're, they're that's what they're doing. They're just looking for anything that you've screwed up on. <clears throat> Because of that, um, they they penalized us another thousand for it, and then after that, um, and because of that that discrepancy, and because there was a thousand dollar difference, that one thousand dollars put it in a higher tax bracket, um, and because we're supposed to be uh, you know taxing the rich. Uh, apparently, uh, that slight extra thousand dollar put having us ha, putting us in that higher tax bracket uh, made us one of those rich people for that year, um, and so uh, we ended up owing the IRS because of that eight thousand dollars after everything was including including the penalty. So that was a uh, punch in the gut right um and so that's put us in a screwed up situation financially um especially now that i'm won't have a job for a month so um your support on patreon is very helpful um so we're just going to be tightening our belts and we're going to power through all right so uh thanks a lot for watching Thank you for your support. Like I said, this is it's extremely helpful and I'm very very grateful to you. And I will talk to you next time. All right, bye.